I'm just one part of the big war, that's all. One little part. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the most impactful scenes from Band of Brothers, one of TV's greatest miniseries. Must be doing something right, look! God, I'm so confused, they're firing on the third gun! We better blow this thing before they figure out what the hell has happened. Number 10, Marching into Bastogne. In this scene, Easy Company and the rest of the 101st Airborne Division are charged with defending Bastogne, a strategic crossroads town. So we're gonna put a perimeter around Bastogne, dig in tight as a tick. Second Battalion be deployed over here to the east. However, Easy is short on ammo and other crucial supplies. As other soldiers retreat after already facing the Germans in the area, the Easy Boys take what ammo they can get from the shell-shocked troops. Any grenades, please? Who's got grenades? They also receive additional ammunition from Lieutenant George Rice. This scene leaves its mark because it illustrates how heroic the characters are in a quiet way. What's your name, Lieutenant? Hey, George Rice, 10th Armor. Good work, son. You got any more mortar rounds, sir? We're real short. Underprepared, underdressed, and outgunned, we see them march into the darkness with the flashes of guns in the distance. What kings of men they were. Number 9. Pranking Captain Sobel Humor is sprinkled throughout Band of Brothers. It helps the men of Easy Company deal with the horror around them. There should be no fence here. Tipper! However, one of the funniest moments in the series happens before they enter the war. The company's original commanding officer, Captain Sobel, isn't the best leader in the field. There should be no, there should be no fence here. Um, <clears throat> we, we could go over it, sir. During a training exercise, he gets his group lost in a field. George Luz is goaded into pranking Sobel to get the group moving again. Is there a problem, Captain Sobel? Who said that? Who broke silence? I think it's Major Horton, sir. He impersonates Major Horton's voice perfectly, instructing Sobel to cut through a farm's fence. What is the goddamn holdup, Mr. Sobel? <laughs> a fence, sir, um, God. A barbed wire fence! It's some great payback for all the grief Sobel puts his men through. The only thing funnier than the herd of cows running loose is Sobel's face when he realizes what happened. Number 8. The Battle of Carentan Around a week after D-Day, Easy Company must retake the French town of Carentan. It's their first major urban engagement, and it gets incredibly chaotic. Where did everybody go? I have no idea! Right from the start, they take heavy fire on their approach, losing many men. Additionally, fighting in a town creates a ton of collateral damage and puts civilians in harm's way. Easy Company has a rough time of it throughout, with some of the grisliest injuries in the series, not to mention Blythe's mental trauma. And just when it seems like it's all over, Richard Winters is hit by a ricochet. It's an explosive and impactful battle that left a major impression. Number 7. The Normandy Landings June 6, 1944. D-Day. Easy Company and many other paratroopers take part in the Normandy invasion. The sequence depicting the nighttime battle on the coast of France is harrowing from beginning to end. The planes take fire throughout. Some men are injured before they even jump. An entire plane goes up in flames, and all around them are explosions and utter chaos. Maybe three more minutes on this barrack! We get any lower, we ain't gonna need any friggin' parachutes! Not only is it impressive that the real Easy Company and other real soldiers managed to survive something this dangerous, but the scene is also incredible from a production perspective. Band of Brothers was released in 2001, and yet the visual effects of this battle have aged amazingly well. Truly, it was a miniseries ahead of its time. Number 6. Roe and Renee One of the most gripping episodes in the series follows one of Easy Company's medics, Eugene Doc Rowe. His efforts to keep his men alive in the cold hell of the forests around Bastogne often seem fruitless. Nevertheless, a major bright spot is his friendship with Belgian nurse Renée Lemaire. You're a good nurse. The pair's quiet conversation in the ruins of Bastogne is particularly memorable. Renée offers Doc chocolate, and he notices the state of her hands. He insists her skill with healing the men is a gift, though Renée feels it's the opposite. But your touch calms people. 
That's a gift from God. No, it's not a gift. God would never give such a painful thing. Nevertheless, when the time comes to continue helping others, she leaps at the chance. This quiet moment of humanity is made even more poignant by Renee's death when the aid station is bombed. Number five, attack on the guns at Brecourt. Arguably Easy Company's first major engagement on the ground on D-Day, this battle sees them charged with taking out a group of cannons at Brecourt that are targeting one of their landing zones. Let's go, let's go! Follow me! Easy's assault on the guns captures the frenetic nature of combat perfectly, while still making everything coherent and relatively simple to follow. The action is fast and frequent, and even manages to inject a few comedic moments. I can't believe I'm f***ed up my ass, sir. Your ass. Some incidents with grenades, a shot in the behind, and the loss of one man aside, this is still a textbook attack on a fixed position. And as the end card of the episode indicates, we mean that literally. Number four, barrage and breakdown. I need my helmet. You hear that? That Joe? Yeah, I think that's Joe. Easy Company stay in the forest surrounding Bastogne sees the company hit several times by German artillery. Shit. And while the one that Carwood Lipton compares to the 4th of July is awe-inducing... For some reason at that moment in that half-finished foxhole, all I could think about was the 4th of July when I was a kid. A far more impactful one occurs later in the episode. During this barrage, several of the long-standing fixtures of the series are killed. Joe Toy and Bill Garnier are wounded and lose limbs in a brutal sequence. And while he's not injured himself, Buck Compton is torn up seeing them torn up. It's a scene that hammers home that even soldiers who aren't injured still suffer emotional trauma. Gosh, how we all know what an exciting young man you are and how your heart and love. Number three, Spears's run. During their time in Bastogne, Easy is saddled with Lieutenant Dyke, who isn't exactly a battlefield commander. So when the time comes to take the town of Foy, Dyke freezes. I'm taking over. Precision, let's in! Captain Winters wants to go himself, but is refused. Enter then Lieutenant Ronald Spears. What is a grenade launchers on that building till it's gone? When it's gone, I want first to go straight in. Forget going around. Everybody else follow me. Yes, sir. Spears quickly takes charge, assessing the situation and leading the men forward quickly and decisively. While that alone is awesome enough, he soon after charges straight through the German lines to hook up with another company. At first, the Germans didn't shoot at it. I think they couldn't quite believe what they were seeing. And to top off this Sunday of badassery, Spears returns in the same direction from which he came. But after he hooked up with I Company, he came back. The leadership and valor on display here are simply unmatched. Plus, he really did it. What a boss. Number two, liberating the concentration camp. In the Second World War, the Holocaust always looms. When Easy Company men first find a concentration camp, they don't understand what they're seeing. And even knowing what's coming, it's still shocking. They didn't have enough ammo for all the prisoners, so... They so viele as they come. They killed as many as they could. The imprisoned men are all emaciated and malnourished. The production reportedly hired cancer patients to help make it more authentic. Doctors, musicians, Schreiber, Schneider, tailors, clerks, farmers, intellectuals, and normal people. Seeing the easy men uncover each new horror is hard to watch. Liebgott having to tell the liberated prisoners that they can't leave is the ultimate heartbreak, though. Even if it is a show, just knowing that real people were treated this way turns the stomach. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Bull in the barn, stranded and alone, Bull Randleman fights to survive. Lipton's promotion. He held easy together, and he didn't even realize it. Every day kept the spirits up, kept the men focused, gave them direction. All the things a good combat leader does.
You don't have any idea who I'm talking about, do you? No, sir. The mark of a true soldier. Blythe deserved that Edelweiss. Winters kills a young soldier. It's an event that haunts Easy's leader. Picking up laundry. Not everybody made it back. Lieutenant Mion's one of yours, isn't he? I hope he hasn't forgotten his laundry. I'll take it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Final Scene We in it shall be remembered. We lucky few. We band of brothers. Every war ends eventually. And the conclusion of Easy Company's time in Europe brings with it a tremendous sense of relief. The last scene of the last episode sees a montage of the men playing a game of baseball as Winters recounts everyone's lives after the war. Bull Ranneman was one of the best soldiers I ever had. He went into the earth-moving business in Arkansas. He's still there. It's touching to know that after everything these men went through, many of them went on to succeed and stay connected in civilian life. Louis Nixon had some tough times after the war. He was divorced a couple of times. Then in 1956, he married a woman named Grace and everything came together for him. As if that wasn't perfect enough, it's followed up by the final interview with the real members of Easy Company, with their names finally revealed. I'm just one part of the big war, that's all. One little part. And I'm proud to be a part of it. The real Winter's final speech about a question he got from his grandson is so moving that we struggle to hold back the feels every time we hear it. Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? Grandpa said no. But I served in a company of heroes. Is there a Band of Brothers moment we missed? Sound off your favorites and a curahy in the comments. The real men, the real heroes, are the fellows that are still buried over there and those that come home to be buried. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.